Well, we've been kept in the loop this week, haven't we? Hello there guys, my name is Coast Chow and welcome to this video. Now today, we're going to be going upside down because today we're going to go around and around with the Looping Group's brand new flagship park, Drayton Manor Theme Park. We're going to be going up, we're going to be going down, we're going to be going around and around and around and around because today, we're going to be talking about future sites of potential investment that I think the Looping Group could look into. Now, of course, the Looping Group are the brand new owners of Drayton Manor. I'm going to share with you a brief history of the theme park, including the Looping Group news. Um, at the start of this video, for those of you who don't know much about Drayton Manor, because this is factual entertainment after all. No! And, obviously, we're going to be taking a look at the five potential sites of development that we could see the Looping Group take part in in future years. So before we get started, massive shout outs to Brian Galeas Falco Flair. If you want a shout out in the next video, comment down below and I'll give you a shout out. You know I do. And for now guys, let's go into Drayton Manor's history and let's have a look at future sites for the Looping Group to potentially invest in. So the land which Drayton Manor theme park was built on once belonged to the Peel family. The Drayton Manor Mansion, built for Sir Robert Peel, the second baronet in 1835, had been reduced to ruins by 1926. The British Army requisitioned it as a training post during World War II, and after the war, entrepreneurs George and Vera Bryan borrowed £6,000 and brought the land and the 17 huts that the army constructed during their stay. And in 1950, they opened a small amusement park which is a handful of children's rides. In 1954, Miss Molly Badham, who later opened the nearby Twycross Zoo, joined forces with the Bryans and opened a small zoo to complement the amusement park. The amusement park grew slowly in the 1950s, 60s and 70s, but in the late 1980s, the park began to install bigger and more thrilling rides to attract customers from all over the UK. In February 2020, the park suffered floods damage from Storm Dennis, and following this, the park was required to remain shut until July 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic. On the 3rd of August 2020, the park entered administration and was bought by the French-born Looping Group, who also own UK theme parks West Midland Safari Park and Pleasurewood Hills, along with other European properties such as Bagatelle in France and Aventure and Park Helen Dawn in Holland, to name just a couple. So that is a brief history on Drayton Manor theme park for those of you who need some reminders. And now we're going to look at some sites for investment. Now, us in the theme park community, we've you know asked for years for investment, and. You know, when we heard rumours of the park going a more family direction, which is like the 4 to 8 market, you know, many thought this would go the same way as American Adventure, where they go down the family market for a couple of years and they go out of business entirely, forced to close and turn into some kind of different development. However, Drake Manor have saved, uh, been saved by the Looping Group. So uh, we're going to see five sites of potential investment and development, future development, and we're going to see what the Looping Group could realistically put in this site. Now, we have to remind ourselves that this is still a family theme park, even though they won't go down, they may not go down the four to eight mark, especially with this being the new flagship park for the Looping Group. So we have to think realistically, though, about what investments they could make. So I'm going to be, you know, realistic and brutally honest about it. So let's have a look at the five sites of investment that I could see in the long-term future for Drayton Manor. So kicking off with the site that's been flattened recently, and we all know which one it is, it's the Marison X-Car Coaster G-Force that's gone at the park now. And I could see three different routes, well technically two, but there's three rides on your screen, along with the Google Earth image. So one route they could go down is to replace it with a brand new Intamin Water Coaster Complex. Now this is the Ultra Splash, not the Giga Splash, the Ultra Splash, which is Intamin's take on a Power Splash. Basically it's a single rail Power Splash. So, you know, this one's definitely a potential investment, and I could see this happening because I think that with Splash Canyon closed and they've only got Storm Force 10, they haven't got some kind of shuttle water coaster. So, I think that something like a uh, Intamin Ultra Splash or a Mac Power Splash, I would have put a Power Splash on the screen as well, but I think an Intamin Ultra Splash would be a better model. Uh, so, I think that would be good for this site. I think you could really stretch it across and you could get some nice splash elements um, to the crowd bit at the side of the ride. So, I think there's a, a decent potential for some site landscaping there to, to accumulate this particular attraction. 
Now another route they could go down, and this is something I've been thinking about, is a couple of new flat rides. So I could see a Zamperla Disco with the Airtime Hill and a Zamperla Nebulas. Now if you don't know what a Nebulas is, basically we've got one of these new rides at Coney Island uh, in uh, basically Coney, Coney Island Luna Park in um, in America and basically it's these new swinging motion slides and you know there's I think some people predicted you know in 2020 uh, well for 2020 that one of these was going to go into a Six Flags Park um, you know and I think that I think that one of these would be a very nice addition to the park. I think this would be great. Same with the Disco. Classic flat ride. You can't get wrong with that. And uh, I think it would be a great way to fill up the site. And it would be a great way to add to the flat ride category as well. Next up then we've got Splash Canyon site. Which is of course... Now you can see part of Shockwave circled as well. But I'm in to circle the whole Splash Canyon. Uh, so Splash Canyon is the Rapids ride. Of course it closed during the unfortunate accident. Um... We all know that incident. I'm not going to go into details about the incident because it's too tragic. But uh, a few years ago, there was an unfortunate, tragic incident. And, of course, the rides have been remained closed ever since. And uh, many people suggested that this may never reopen. However, with the buyout by the Looping Group, they could do something with that site. Now, if they don't want to reopen the Rapids... Uh, and they decide to demolish it for a different rapids ride uh, or a different ride. I think what the, I think the route they should go down is the Ride Engineer Switzerland rapids ride, and I mean the Mystic River Falls type one. Now they could do that, or they could go down the usual one where there's no elevator lift deal, but just a Ride Engineer Switzerland rapids ride. That's why you can only see one image on your screen with the Google Earth image. So I think that Mystic River Falls has been getting great reviews, and I think that you know. Drayton Manor could do with a new Rapids ride from scratch to uh, have it, you know, all rethemed and have it themed with Shockwave and, you know, have it all integrated in this brand new themed area and, you know, they could have some really good uh, potential of theming being added. So I think that this is a ride refurbishment that should happen in the near future if they're not going to reopen the original ride system. Moving in then to Pirates Adventure and this has been a site that's been talked about for a number of years. There's been rumours of a Thomas Land expansion in the GeForce site. There was actually rumours, if you think many, many years ago back in 2012, uh, that Pirates Adventure could be closing at the end of 2012 and there was a rumour they were going to put two new Thomas Land rides inside the site. So, you know, things can happen. Things can happen and I think if they were going to expand Thomas Land down Pirates Adventure's side, you know, they'd need a new entrance for the area, they would need some kind of new uh, theme for the ride, some new characters to base it upon and, you know, the, the Sea Storm ride next to... Um, Pirates Adventure and of course the Dodgems ride would have to be rethemed as well unless they decide to replace one of those rides with the Thomas Land attraction. But that's not happening. We all know that's not happening. That was back in 2012. That's not happening anymore. Uh, G Force won't be expanded with Thomas Land either, I don't think. Way too complicated. But Pirates Adventure, I think we could see something new in that building. Now there's two routes that could go down. Now the one, the image at the top, I'll explain in a little bit. The first one down below in the bottom left corner is a Mac Interactive Dart ride. So it could be a boat ride like Pirates Adventure was. It could be a track dart ride or a trackless dart ride. They could do some different things with it. And getting Mac rides in would be an incredible uh, company to work with. Now the second one, which you can see above, you probably don't know what that is. You're probably thinking, why is there a Gerslauer Infinity Coaster on the screen? It's not, don't worry. This is a particularly newer type of coaster from Zamperla. This is the factory coaster. Now, if you don't know what that is, go and check out the Zamperla website. You can check out roller coaster category on the products, or no, the Z-Rides uh, site, a uh, little mini site on the website, and you can see factory coaster. Watch the video because this is a cute little family coaster. Well, not little, but it's a cute family coaster. Uh, perfect for Drayton Manor's market. Perfect indoor coaster. It is a full indoor coaster with different elements, screens, little drops here and there, a couple of lift hills. And I think looking at the building in China that hosts the current only factory coaster, I think this would be a perfect um, this would be a perfect coaster for the Pirates Adventure building if they decide to fix it as well. Because if you fix the building and then put a factory coaster in, that would work brilliantly. And like I said, look at the building on the China one. It's not as big as Pirates Adventure, so you could fit a custom layout factory coaster inside that building with a Pirates theme. 
So bring in some new pirate theming because you've sold off the other ones in the auction. Uh, comment down below if you got anything from that Pirates Adventure auction, by the way. <laughs> um, and I think that a Zampella Fetch Coaster with a custom layout would work very, very well in that building. So either a Mac Interactive Dart Ride or a Zampella Fetch Coaster because I think the Fetch Coaster is very underrated in my opinion. I think it looks brilliant. And like I said, it's perfect for Drayton's Market. Um, there's one particular screen where if you put like a pirate element or a pirate themed screen on there instead of the, the volcanic screen that was showing on the, the China one, uh, which looked more like a factory theme that one. Uh, but if you replace the theme with pirates, you could fill in that coaster site really, really well. Uh, and it would be a nice new coaster as well, which is what Drayton Manor have needed from the theme park community. So they need a new coaster, but it would work into a dart ride as well. So I think it's a, it, it kills two birds with one stone, which is bad for animal cruelty, but you get my point. <laughs> so next up then is Excalibur, and I could see two particular things with this site. If they want to go down the coaster route, I could see one of the brand new Intamin concepts, and the other route is a replacement ride system. So let us let me get the, the red herring out of the way. Let me get the elephant out of the room and talk about the coaster and why I think this particular type. Um, the Intamin Hot Racer, this is one of the brand new concepts, like the Ultra Splash, like the Giga Splash, like the Vertical LSM Launch Coaster, which I spoke about in the Adventure Island video, check that out. And, um, the Hot Racer is basically Intamin dance to a single rail coaster. Now they've got three different types, they've got the, the big, massive one, the Auto Drone. They've got the, the much smaller one, but the, the multi-launch one that's still big, but not as big as Auto Drone, and that is, of course, the overdrive and then they've got the infinity model now if you dried the lake and moved the christmas santa's grotto attraction that's in the tower um because that's what excalibur is used for now it's for uh, for a christmas santa's grotto attraction move the santa's grotto to somewhere else in the park then you've got a site now uh that's easier said than done i agree but i think it could work now um why I think the Overdrive model, now it could be the Infinity model as well, but I think the Overdrive, because I think it's bigger than the Infinity, it could fit over that site really well. You could give it a medieval theme to pay homage to Excalibur. Now, the more likely route that I see them going down is the replacement ride system from Mac Rides, or from someone else, but I used Mac as an example on the screen. So, for those of you who don't know what Excalibur is, this opened in 2003. It's a tow boat ride with a story, a medieval story of Excalibur. And uh, it had an onboard narration telling this story through Castleville, uh, the journey through Castleville. It was manufactured by Bear Rides. The theming was created by a company called Farmer Studios. And it, I tried this ride, you know, a, about a year or so before it closed. And what a ride that was for my childhood. It was such a great ride. And I'd like to see a replacement boat ride system with that in. Repair the dark ride elements, get the a new ride system that pays homage to the old system in, and just, you know, bring that ride back to form of glory, because I think that could be a potentially massive development for Drayton Manor, especially with the, the family theme park route they could go down as a flagship park with still some thrilling investments. Finally then, uh, we've got this site, which is the site of Vertigo, which is the park's uh, high ropes course. Now, I've I, apparently that's closed I think that's been closed and uh, I don't think it's been removed yet but uh, I've heard from some well, I've seen somewhere that it's closed but I'm not too sure how true that is but if that is true then I could see some kind of uh, either flat rides package on that site so I could see a Mondale top scan or a Mondale wind seeker or both uh, or I could see again a brand new roller coaster, and I'm looking at Juvelen, which is the part which is um, over in Denmark, and that is the uh, Intamin family launch coaster. I could see one of them come to this park uh, and give it a nice a nice theme. Uh, the Buffalo coaster area, put the Buffalo and the this new launch coaster, this family launch coaster in there as a Wild West section uh, with the drunken barrels, etc. And you've got a decent you know sight of land. So uh, especially with uh, Sheriff Showdown, take back the West Dart ride, not too far away. Uh, and maybe, you know, if you wanted to include Apocalypse into this area, you know, give Apocalypse a bit of a bit of a more Wild West backstory, but still incorporate the Apocalypse name into it. And, um, yeah, I think that a Wild West family launch coaster next to Buffalo Stampede, but replacing Vertigo would be a great addition for the coaster lineup. 
Uh, but if you wanted to go down a different lineup, I would go down the flat rides package for the Vertigo site and, you know, maybe even that expansion plot of land. Maybe do a nice themed area like Tornado Springs at Poulton's Park. You know, I'd look at them for inspiration. Uh, and maybe go down that area uh, to have like a new themed area with Buffalo Stampede and this brand new flat rides package and maybe a couple of other family rides and a couple of playgrounds here and there. Just to take inspiration from Tornado Springs and to bring in a new area for Drayton Manor that's not Thomas Land. So uh, I think that would be good. Originally I was sticking with five, but I wanted to show you this bonus one as a, like an extra bonus thing they could do. It's not a new development, but it is a refurbishment still. And I think they could refurbish Shockwave into a flawless coaster. Now, um, you might think I'm absolutely bonkers for saying that. But I could generally see it. If they didn't want to go down the stand-up route anymore, because stand-up isn't the trend in roller coaster anymore, I think we could generally see a flawless conversion in the future if they wanted to. So, um, I don't think it's completely out of the question for a flawless conversion, but we'll see. I mean, I'd like to see a flawless conversion, because then it makes it the UK's only flawless coaster. So... You know, even though the stand-up trend may be over, the flawless tr conversion trend could continue with Shockwave. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this video on Drake Manor and what I think they should invest in by the Looping Group. Uh, this video is specifically targeted with, for the Looping Group to, you know, tell them what I think they should add in and what kind of areas they should refurbish. Uh, I went into a lot of detail about a lot of different areas, so, um, you know... They've got Drayton Manor now, they've got this flagship part, this brand new flagship part with the Thomas Land, the zoo, the hotel, uh, and of course the whole theme park itself with, with Thomas Land and the zoo. So, uh, and they've got the hotels to go with it. So, you know, I think Drayton Manor is an ever-growing park. I think the Looping Group could give it some nice needed investment and refurbishment. Nothing too major in the, in the near future, but, you know, I think some refurbishments here and there to just slowly but surely take this park in. Especially with it being the flagship park, as mentioned in the uh, in the quotations uh, from the Looping Group. I think that flagship park gives me good, decent signs. And we could be seeing a real change in atmosphere for Drayton Manor. And hopefully Drayton Manor can be uh, promoted as that flagship park and have the brand new rising attractions and shows and, you know, new additions to the park to go with it. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this video from Drayton Manor. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Click the notification bell to see next YouTube video. We're on the road to, hopefully, 2,000 subscribers very, very soon. If we can get to 10k subscribers by the end of the year, I will launch merchandise website. If we get to 5k by the end of the year, I will launch paid memberships. And for now, guys, keep living the coast of life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an awesome day.